Hey, it's Joe Walsh here with Peghead Nation, and uh, today I want to talk to you about a system of playing uh, bluegrass-style breaks uh, in a closed position. Uh, what I mean is no open strings. And what's great about that is you can use uh, all, all uh, uh, these double stops and licks and ideas that I'm going to show you in the key of G. You can use them in any key. Uh, so it's, it's a really efficient way of dealing with keys that you might find intimidating now. Uh, let me give you an example on the tune I'll Fly Away. I'll uh, just do a little demo of what, what we're aiming for and then I'll break it down. So you could uh, do something that sounds like this. So, first of all, what we want to do is uh, talk about where uh, where we're going to be finding all these notes. Uh, a good place to, to to set a landmark and start from is, is putting your first finger on the root note of whatever key you're in. And in this case, we're going to be working out of the key of G. We can play this melody in first position, but today uh, we're going to be playing it with no open strings up here in the middle of the neck, uh, starting with your first finger on the fifth fret. And uh, in case you have never learned a closed scale, let's let's check out a closed uh, G scale in this position. Uh, and these this scale will be uh, where we're going to find all the notes that we're going to use to play this melody in this break. Um, going upwards from this G, we're going to play with our first finger on the G, middle finger on this A, ring on that B, and pinky on the C. One, two, three, four, and then we're going to do the exact same fingering on the A string. So let's go from G to G. Great, and we're going to go back down. And now we can keep going below this G, and uh, this first note I'm going to show you is a little bit of a reach, but uh, uh, we don't actually use it that much. So don't uh, don't despair. So going low below G would be G, F sharp with your pinky, E with your ring finger, and D with your middle finger. And then this C is an important one to know about as well. So what we're doing, what I'm doing here is is trying to establish some context of where we're where, where we're going to be finding this melody. Um, let's let's uh, let's sketch out a very simple version of I'll Fly Away in this part of the neck. I would start uh, with my ring finger. One thing I should mention before we go any further, try not to move your first finger up and down the neck. We're going to try and stay in this position as much as possible. Uh, the more you stay centered in one position, uh, the more uh, you're able to have a sense of what note you need, uh, what, what finger you would use to play that note, or where you would find it in this position. So as much as possible, stay within this position. So this melody is going to start on the B note here with our ring finger. And uh, let me sketch out the beginning of this melody. I go. Let's try it again. Try it with me. One, two, three, four. And the next phrase would be. Pretty subtle phrase. Let's do the second half of that uh, uh, that melody here. It starts out pretty similarly, and it changes at the end. It goes. Great. So, uh, if you're like me, you may not have heard too many chord changes in there. And and one thing we can do to start. Uh, sound on a little bit more like a solo or what you might choose to play on a song is add double stops here and there. So before we add them, let's check out what uh, where we're going to find them. If you think about this as your, as your landmark, your first starting place, with your first finger on that G note, a great place to add a note to make uh, this note sound more like the G chord is this D below here with your middle finger. That's, that's a great place to 
sort of have your, your home in this position. So that's a, a, uh, somewhere we can find a double stop that sounds like G. And another one we can find, another place to play a combination, a combination of notes that are uh, also going to sound like G. So we're changing notes, but we're not changing the chord we're going to sound like. That's an important uh, distinction. It is up here. It's your ring finger on that B note and your first finger on that D. So we've got a G here. We've got a G here. But uh, we're changing we're changing double stops, but we haven't changed the underlying harmony. Um, so we got two options for our one chord, and the reason I'm starting to call it a number is when we change keys, we're we're going to want to be able to think about things we've learned in this key without being attached to calling them G or C or D. So as we go on, we're going to want to think about these as numbers uh, in addition to G, C, and D in this key. So we got G or one and G or 1 here. Let's go back to our starting position, this, this first G. If, instead of playing a D here with your middle finger, if you add your ring finger on the G string, and you keep your first finger on that G note, so I've gone from this, this shape to this, and perhaps you can hear, it sounds like we've changed chords. This, this uh, double step sounds like a C chord. This is a good place to uh, uh, get a, uh, something that sounds like a four chord uh, in whatever key we're in. In this case, of course, it's C. So this is our, our one and our four. And again, remember this is one. And a great place to find uh, the third of our, our trifecta of most common chords is this. This is the five chord, uh, which will get us through this whole song, this whole melody. So. Uh, the position you're starting on, that G and then D, if you shift that over to the D and A strings using that exact same fingering, exact same frets, you get a chord that sounds like D, or if you think of it numerically, like five. So you got one, four, five, and then one. Let's uh, let's try and add this to this melody. So what you might, uh, one thing you can do, and, and there's a lot of ways to do this, and not necessarily one right way to do it, but uh, when you notice that you're playing a melody close to one of these double stops, you can start to add other notes, perhaps the other note of that double stop, to really flesh out the harmony. So for example, at the beginning of that melody, instead of just going, I might go, and now we got a couple notes ringing together that really clarify uh, what chord we're on. And uh, uh, one thing I'm starting to do is, instead of just playing every note as a really long uh, uh, ringing note that, that has a lot of sustain, you can start to fill in uh, and play, instead of letting it ring out the whole time, you can play uh, a bunch of eighth notes to fill in that space. So maybe that first phrase could sound like this. And, and that'd be a pinky. Instead of, instead of shifting, again, Keep, try and stay in this position as much as possible. So this this note should be accessible with your pinky. And if you if you think back to that melody we first started sketching out, what's up next is this G note. Uh, but the song goes to a C chord. So when we get to that G note, we're gonna we're gonna add that note below that that, uh, that E note on the G string. resolve back to a G chord. So let's check out, uh, just to review, the first half of, uh, of this melody, and, and I'll give an example of one way you might add some double stops. Also, there's a really iconic uh, uh, kickoff, uh, or iconic way of starting a phrase, whether it's your solo or the whole song, uh, that's really uh, comes very easily out of this shape. So let me give you an example of that, and we can use that to start this melody. If you have your first and middle finger down here in this, what you might call your starting position, uh, you could do, you could start on that low G string and play it twice. Put your ring finger down and add that E. And here's that G. In context, it'll give us this lick that sounds like, it sounds like a, a, a kickoff. Lots of classic bluegrass solos start that way. So, um, 
I'm going to play the first half, and then we'll check out the second half and see how we can add some double stops. One, two, three, four, one. So the second half is going to start out very similarly, so I may choose to do something pretty similar. And this part of the song is where the D chord enters in a moment. So we're going to go from G, D, back to G. So that could be a really simple way to connect this G chord to this G chord via that D chord. So what's uh, uh, what's so cool about this system is is like I said before is how accessible it makes other keys. So what I'd like to do is try and play this one more time here in this key, and uh, we're going to focus on the patterns and the relative shapes and the way our fingers uh, are, are are spaced from each other without being attached to the frets because we're going to move to another part of the neck and try and maintain these patterns. So one more time. Uh, Let's play, uh, let's try and play this, or whatever version of the solo you've come up with at this point, in this position and get ready to shift it to another key. Uh, so uh, let's give that a whirl. One, two, three, four, one. So let's try and play this exact same thing in the key of F. So as I said earlier, we're putting our first finger on the root note of whatever key we're trying to play in. Uh, and our, our first finger had been on G. Let's put our first finger on F note. We don't even have to change strings. We're just moving the whole thing back two frets. So now our first finger is on F. And hopefully your middle finger wants to drop in to that same starting place, the same relationship to your first finger. So ideally, we're all here on F and C below, and that gives us a good place to start out with that same relationship. Let's all try it together in F. One, two, three, four, one. key. Let's try it in uh, B. Let's try it in the, in, in the key of B. And a great place to find this is if you put your first finger here in the B note of the A string. And again, hopefully your middle finger falls into uh, that same relationship on the string below there. So hopefully we're on B and F sharp. Let's, uh, let's jump in and try and see if we can play this melody in the key of B. One, two, three, four, one. So now that we play that in G, F, and B, try and put that into um, lots of other keys. Uh, put, play it all over the neck uh, in as many possible uh, keys as you can find. And uh, good luck with it. Tune back in for the next lesson where we uh, uh, I'll break down how to find blue notes in the in this shape and a couple other things uh, that I was doing to make that initial skeleton melody sound more like a solo. Thanks, Joe Walsh here with Peghead Nation.